Ugh, your toenails are gross. Can I go climb a tree? Climb a tree? Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting you're a raccoon. But don't you want to listen to today's story? Today's story is about a tree. Nah, I'm good. As I was saying, today's story deals with a very specific tree. I hope you guys enjoy. I'm just going to talk for a few minutes and I really need you to listen, okay? This is going to be the last thing you can do for me, and I don't want my words to be wasted. First of all, I love you. I really mean that. I really do love you. I really don't know if I ever said that to you before or if you ever knew, but it's true. Do you remember the mall where we met? I know it closed down a while ago, but do you remember what it looked like? Do you remember where we were? I can tell you everything about that day. It was the Sunlight Shopping Mall. It was always pretty easy for me to remember that much of it. It was the only mall in the city painted in obnoxious bright yellow with a gigantic sun symbol hanging over the main entrance. It was supposed to light up at night to remind people of the mall's slogan. The sun always shines here. But half the bulbs were burned out, so at night it looked more like a crescent moon than a bright morning sun. It was October 5th, at 4.26 p.m. It was a Sunday. You were sitting in the food court by yourself drinking a diet soda from a yellow plastic cup with a red straw. It was fairly cold that day, so you had on a pink winter hat and a white down jacket. Your leggings weren't exactly seasonal, and the left knee had a slight tear in it. But then there was your hair, cascading down your shoulders like a golden waterfall. I had never seen hair like yours before. It was like it was spun from gold. I had noticed you from afar. I was outside the comic book store reading a posting about a contest they were having. Simply put your name and contact information on an index card and slide it into a box. If your name was chosen the following week, you'd win a life-size cardboard Iron Man, signed by Robert Downey Jr. I'd be splitting my time between reading the contest rules and glancing over at you. By the third time I had turned back to looking at the posting, I heard your voice behind me. He said, Excuse me, when does the contest winner get picked? I couldn't believe you were talking to me. Um, it ends next Friday and the winner is picked on Saturday. You then gave me a bit of an odd look and apologized. I had been wearing a polo shirt and khakis and you thought I had worked there. Do you remember what I said to you? I smiled and said, No, I don't work here but you're making me wish I did. He smiled and laughed a bit, and it was beautiful. We spent the next hour sitting together in that food court talking about comic books, superhero movies, our likes and dislikes. I couldn't believe how much we had in common. You see, things like that never happened for me. I was always too shy to even say hello to anyone, and when we started talking and really hitting it off, I thought for certain that I was dreaming. But you were real. As real as anything. You had to get home, so you said goodbye to me. I thought this would be a one-time meeting, and I really didn't think it would go anywhere. But when I turned around and I started to walk away, I felt your arm tug at my shoulder. You handed me your phone number on a napkin. Did you know I kept it? The napkin, I mean. I watched you walk all the way to the main doors. I probably stood there another ten minutes after you walked out. I just couldn't believe what had happened. It took me two days to work up the courage to text you and ask you on a date. I don't know what I was so afraid of. Maybe I thought you would reject me. 
You can't imagine the feeling in my heart when you texted me back just two words. What time? We spent the whole night at the amusement park riding all the big rides, eating everything sugar-coated or deep-fried from every concession stand we walked past, and absolutely destroying my rotator cuff and emptying my wallet, throwing baseballs at glass bottles, just to win you a $10 stuffed animal. It was last call for rides, and we stood in line for the only one I had enough tickets left for. The Ferris wheel. The park looked so small from up so high. The noise of the crowds would be drowned out each time we rose back up to the top. It was like seeing heaven. We gave new names to all the constellations we saw in the dark canopy of the night sky. My hands were freezing holding on to the metal safety bar. And then, I felt yours slowly cling to mine. It was warm. You put your head on my shoulder, and the world went away. They picked the winner of the Iron Man cardboard stand that weekend. I couldn't believe I had actually won. It was the second best thing to happen to me that week. You were the first. We had another date that same day, and the look on your face when I stood outside your apartment door with the cardboard Iron Man standing next to me was absolutely priceless. You gave me a hug and said congratulations. And when I said, no, I won him for you, you kissed me. For six months I had the world in my hands. I'd call in sick to work just to spend the afternoon with you. I'd leave notes in your jacket pockets with cute little drawings I made, just to make you smile. I'd text you good morning and good night each day, so you would know I was always thinking of you. I'd wait outside your work just so I could walk you to your car. I really had everything I had ever wanted. And then, something changed with you. You became different. I'd text you in the morning and you wouldn't reply. I'd stop by your apartment and you'd be out. I'd go to meet you at work and you would either be working late or you'd have left early. When you had messaged me, it was always something very brief like, Sorry, just busy. One Sunday afternoon, I was outside that comic book store and you were sitting in the food court. It was just like the first time we met, except this time, you weren't alone. I tried to comfort myself with thoughts like, maybe he's just an old friend, or it's probably someone you worked with. The following week, the Iron Man cutout was left on my front steps, along with a stack of notes that I had left in your jacket. I tried to text you, but there was no response. I tried to call, but the call never went through. Did I smother you? Did I say something wrong? My head has been in this dark place for what seems like forever. You were my sunshine. I carved our initials into this tree, but I never showed you. I don't know if it's because I thought you'd find it childish or... Maybe it was because the tree is old and dying. The day I saw it atop this hill, I thought it looked lonely here. Maybe this tree just needed a friend. I'm not really sure. But today, it will have a friend. I never knew how difficult it was to tie a noose before today. I really don't know if I even tied it right. I just hope it works. And that it's quick. I'm fairly certain the branch will hold the weight when I kick out the chair. Loss of consciousness should happen in only a few seconds. Why did it have to come to this? Why did you take my happiness away? I just wanted to be with you. You made me hate life. But I don't hate you. Like I said, I love you. I guess it's time. This is goodbye. I wrote a last note for you, but I don't think it matters. 
you're not going to read it anyway. So I'll just put it into your pocket. Just like old times. No! Please! Shh. Just close your eyes. It should be over quickly. It is still so beautiful. That's all for today's video. I hope that you... Mini Crawler, are you okay? No, I fell out of the tree. Are you hurt? What does it look like?